Welcome back to another edition of Sound of Sirens. I'm your host, Thomas Ornis, and today we're going to discuss some college hoops and the latest loss and uh, the only loss of the season and the football season last year or last weekend against Texas Tech, which uh, I had to re- honestly, so much has happened in the world. I had to go yeah. watch the highlights to remind me what, what even happened. But uh, seems like it was a long time ago with yeah. the week, the, the way with everything that's been going on this week. It seems like there was a bye week between, right? It's kind of, that's so how much was going on in the world, but um, yeah, their first the uh, first uh, college football rankings came out seventeenth, uh, twelve team playoff, first time ever there's a rankings for that, and ranked seventeenth, which I think we're uh, that's a kind of a pinch myself still moment in Iowa State history. I think still still in the hunt even the after hunt. the loss to Texas Tech. I mean, and it was a there's so many things that could have gone our way and didn't and. Well, we we have nobody to blame but ourselves. I mean, we, right. you know, I listened to some Texas Tech podcasts last week, and you know, they kept talking about how this team doesn't beat themselves. And at the end of the day, that's what happened. I mean, those penalties were killer. And the, they had two fourth down conversions that, and uh, interception that got taken away because of the hands to the face, yeah. which is really the game there and that was a killer the, yeah. Bu- the busama was in game by we which we, he can't, wasn't we can't really say that because he wasn't really in but no but then we got a penalty right after that no it was like i even heard other iowa state podcasts talking about it. that was a great point i even think about it at the time is it really made it so they reviewed it so we couldn't go hurry up and just right rocco touchdown just like the ucf game and the and in the second or the two-point conversion the same play but that kind of sucks because we were talking about podcast before where this team really hadn't even on the broadcast of the Texas Tech game that this is one of the best it was the the best uh, penalized team going into the game Le- least State, penalized, least yeah. penalized and we had yeah. what seven or eight penalties that game and false starts with those two ineligible men downfield penalties kill us the hands to face was a killer I mean so drop yeah. passes uh missed field goals which I don't even think Conradi could have should even been out there for a field goal and it's raining and yeah it but was, which that yeah. people talk about, and they gave there's some Cyclone fans that just put that on Twitter, and the Connor Artie's dad post on it. Out. His, oh, did he? That his low his confidence has never been so low. This is only his third year playing football, and oh boy, that's too bad. It just yeah, it just sucks. How it's a real life people. Well, maybe we need to get his dad on the podcast. Right. We did but, that after after they went after Jalen too. People have a short memory that we. If he misses that, if he does that shank against Iowa, right? But he made it right down the middle and made it. A lot of people in the state happy, and I don't think we should forget that, especially when it's only his third year playing football, and he's got a leg on him, and the conditions were terrible. And yeah, they're brutal. Would, and uh, it just get, was put the coaches put him in a position where I don't think he could, was able to succeed, which uh, that's more on the coaches than is on him. Well, I'm I mean, not I sure th- the coaches will. I'm sure the coaches, looking back on it, probably think the same way, and uh, they're not going to blame it on. Already. Right, but you can think of, but that's you, that also swings the other direction too. You can also say that they had enough confidence in him to put him out there to do that, and that's yeah. you know that was a you know they could have just said no, we're not going to try it because we don't have confidence in him, but they did, and you know, you know when it's a wet time. when it's a wet field, I mean the snap is hard, the hold is hard, getting your plant foot slides just a little bit, and something like that can happen. But so. the game had nothing to do with that field goal. There's so no. many more chances, and no. Shouldn't even came down to that. He had a 48, 49 forty-nine feet or field goal in the first half, which people just kind of sleaze by. Which yeah. those are not those field goals are not a gimme in Iowa State. Yeah, we can't score yeah. in the low twenties and win. And I mean, we're de- we're just not built that way. And when Carson Brown scored, that's when I kind of thought it was ball game because I'm so used to our defense uh, holding up uh, holding up our when our defense is told to do something, they usually do it, but. Um, well, it's our team. It's a team sport. Yeah, and we lost. Sport. We had a, too many penalties on offense, and we didn't perform like we should on offense. And then the defense, I thought, would be able to keep them out of the end zone. That's all they had to do in the last drive, and they couldn't do it. So this was a team sport. The offense and defense both didn't do what they should do, and that fourth, and we lost. That fourth and seven really deflated. That was that killer, killer, of the killer. Drive. And uh, we had that would have been game, and we had a fourth and seven where they didn't. They uh, didn't convert. They went over a guy's head, which that would have been a touchdown. If he, yeah. which that would have been terrible. And that's why I thought we had a shot, and we did. But Carson Brown scores a touchdown, and then they just walk down the. They got that fourth and seven long, long conversion, and it really, 
it's hard to stop the team when we got burned a couple times. I mean, right. that, and luckily they missed the missed the pass. But you know, our defense played pretty well for the most part. I mean, and it was just that one last drive that kind of sticks in your head. And but like I said, we get, we you know we have to be in the thirties, I think, every week to 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 play cyclone football type football and. We just didn't do it. As I know, it was a horrible – the weather was a factor. There's no doubt. I mean, everybody was slipping. The reason they scored that first touchdown is because Jeremiah Cooper fell down. And, you know, they – and Texas Tech was slipping as well, so it was on both both ways, but it really affected the game. And that's probably why it was a lower-scoring game too. And that same play, our DN was going to tackle the quarterback and just get sacked, like just absolutely Oh, that – right. And And actually, when that that play happened, I said hold, and I was waiting for it to come back. I said, are you kidding me? And then, of course, ESPN being who ESPN is, they should just stop – Broadcasting college football because they suck at it. I mean, yeah, they're the um, top dog, but and they're they got I mean, all the money. but they're brutal when it comes to replays. They can't get the replay up. And they Never can, saw the re- Brett Meyer. Thank God he posted right. on Twitter. It's the only time we got to see the replay. That's what um, I was just going to the bathroom after the game. Like, show the damn replay. Right. Like, we used the replay back in the day when technology was way worse. They were better at showing the replay right away. But right. Now, for some reason, they just. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't I think yeah. there's a because usually is when there's a missed call or like it, they're trying to go, they're trying to cover up for the refs. I feel like more times than not, I do get, too. When right. they do that, and, yeah, uh, it's just. Do you see on the sideline? There's this one ref. He's kind of a Hawaiian looking or Korean. Yeah, he's looking like dude. one of the best. He's like the top one of the top refs in the country. He's standing on the sideline. Yeah, I think he's a backup. How is he a backup on a Saturday game? I mean, that doesn't. I don't know. They must be. They must just rotate or something. Because I thought he's like one of the guys in like Big Twelve championship games around. Like the, he's like the top one of the top guys. Should know? be like that commercial where you know are they calling in a backup. You know, they've got yeah. that commercial where the guy's backing in the trailer in his driveway. I said right. they need to pull him in there. I mean, because yeah. it wasn't yeah. the ref's fault. No, it wasn't. was not the ref's fault. But but this this uh, lack of replay thing was so aggravating. I mean, but because it, it was a blatant hold, and it's right in front of the white hat. And he just totally messed it. So, and we get we our defensive one of our best defensive backs slips and falls, and they get an easy touchdown out of it. And he moonwalked into the end zone. But uh, yeah, we we need to stop having those like first drive letting up a touchdown games because I think our offense is our offensive just going on history this season is starts off slow and we can't really have our defense giving up t- points and. Uh, getting us under the eight ball right away when. Uh, well, we drove it right down and got a field goal at the first. I mean, we needed to score need, in that. Yeah, in we needed to score more We needed a touchdown in that possession. But again, the we, who knows whether how big of a factor the weather was. I mean, it was it was that way for both teams. But and Burkle gets like a long catch, and then he's trying to get forward progress, and they pop the ball out and cheap fumble there and yeah it's too bad which i still think he's a good player and oh yeah ben bramer's back up and bramer's coming back this week supposedly which it's nice when you have a stud one of the best tight ends young tight ends in the nation and then the backup burkle who unfortunately fumbled the, the ball in that game but his going like burkle had an offer from texas he <laughs> chose out of state and like, that still blows my mind yeah and uh yeah well I, every time i see that and i can't like i can't not recognize that because still I mean, obviously, Campbell's built a freaking good program the last 10 years or whatever. Sure. And it's just uh, as a kid who grew up an Iowa State fan, that will never be normal to me until <laughs> for a while. But, yeah, we still – So, we so what do you ta- think of – go ahead. I'm sorry. We got a lot of talented young fresh – like freshmen and sophomores, and I think uh, we were trying to get – we were getting a little too ahead of our skis thinking about playoff projections and the numbers. And I think that's so much to do with ESPN and, like, the – they just do it right away. Like, as soon as they can do the rankings, and that it's all about the playoff. Yeah. Well, then that, that, that's the way it is with the NCAA, too. I mean, no, we're with football, with basketball. I mean, we're chasing seeding, you know, it mm-hmm. seems like most of the end of the end of the year. But so. in the way where the regular season basketball is kind of diminished, the tournament being so well has kind of diminished the regular season, like Big 12 titles. And it's still hard. I mean, it's, it's still, still it's still harder, in my opinion, to win a outright conference championship, with which is what makes Kansas, what Kansas did so impressive, than it is to win the national championship because there's so many more games. I mean, you can get hot and make it to the Final Four, and then all bets are off when you get to the Final Four. But grinding it out on a regular season that starts the first week in January to the first week in March, and during that time is – like it's in, tough with injuries I mean, and drama. Right. And what do you think about three 
Big Ten teams being ranked ahead of the Big 12 leading BYU Cougars. Like I mean, Oregon, I'm guessing, Ohio State was lost. Oh, it's more than that. So it's Oregon, Ohio State, and Penn State, and Indiana are all are all ranked ahead of BYU. It, we're just got to we got to get used to like just being treated <laughs> unfairly, like the same way in basketball last year. We didn't get the number one seed after we like the, we're obviously we're going to strip the basketball soon, but that game then they, the PA announcer said over the intercom and like Hilton when they talked about the Big Twelve title. Tournament in the when we won last year against Houston, that was the biggest win ever against the number one team ever. The first, yeah, I was crazy. I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, which we kind of just scoffed by, and we were two seed and we we're pissed off. Right, we weren't one seed, but that accomplishment isn't crazy. And yeah, I just think it, it's not no other school, but other than Iowa State, where they don't just kind of scoff by and yeah, they just don't even they yeah, don't give us a boost. Brush it, brush it, to, brush like, it aside. Because there's so many times where that game would have gave us a little boost to up our sheeting a little bit, but it kind of did because we are like the last two seed. I think it's a little bit of a Big Twelve thing. I mean, I just was listening to another podcast that covers the Big Twelve today, and he said in 2014 TCU beat us. Fifty-five to six, and they were kneeing it in the red zone, so they wouldn't embarrass them even more. And they dropped from rank sixth to rank ninth. Yeah, insane. Which the we next just week gotta, we just got used to it. And that's, <laughs> I mean, why, that's why they say like people are so shocked that BYU is not getting the same love as it's the same thing. TCU yeah. just joined the Big Twelve back then, and then they just see the Big Twelve as not like very unsuperior to the Big Ten and SEC. And it's, yeah. it's more blatant, and we just got to accept it. Because yeah. it's not going to change. Yeah, no. We got. It's gonna not, be, it's gonna get, it could get worse. We're going to be staring, yelling at the sky mm-hmm. for decades about it, but it's just the way it is. Unless, unless we can get Clemson and Florida State in the Big Twelve and have Clemson and Florida State be the their, be at their peak. Yeah. Because right now they don't. The all of our programs at their peak is not considered even like the middle of the pack in the SEC. In the media's mind. Right. Yeah, no, it's it's they're they're pushing the two team, their two conference thing, and and like I've said on this thing many times, I mean, if that's the route we're going, then my interest in college football will go south really fast. But that's you a, know, we're still, a, I mean, everything is still in front of us. I mean, we could, we, if you don't think that we can win out, you're crazy. We have the ability to win out. We have the ability to lose a couple more as well. But right. um, I think as long as we can. Keep from getting any more key injuries, and we get Bramer back. I think we're going to get Will McLaughlin back, back not uh, this weekend, but next weekend possibly. Um, and then you know who knows with Caleb Bacon where he's where he stands, and um, just you know be nice to come into Thanksgiving break, you know, around there and being a little healthier than we are even as we speak right now. So, but we got to be ready for Kansas. I mean, I think everybody sees the season Kansas has had, and I'm pretty sure they've. Been winning in you know four of their losses. They've been losing in, or they've been winning in the fourth quarter. They just haven't been able to finish games. So, and I listened to a Kansas podcast today too, and they said that all everybody's saying that they're you know they're really fighting to not be the first. They're, they're fighting for bowl eligibility at this point. Obviously, we're fighting for much something much more important than that. Um, but they're still think their seasons. They they can still salvage a season out of this thing. And uh, they've got players, and they're not very far from home. So I'm hoping we can get a big crowd down there and make it uh, Jack Trice South, and and kind of right the ship as we speak. Because we've had two weeks in a row we haven't played real great. Yeah. So we need to get this figured out fast. Rocco's kind of running for his life at times, and we're not cons- like the running game is just kind of a mystery to me because we yeah. have Carson Hansen who gets like eight yards of carry. I don't think he's healthy. He's not healthy. He must, yeah. he must Then we got to wait. Put a play in the second half. We yeah. Can't, we can't. Put them in the well, first half, and, and the reason I say that, and I don't have any inside information, but you watch him in that first drive, and he is torching people. And then we pull him out to finish the drive, and we stall. Yep. So I just think they're trying to limit the the dings on him, as I guess you could say. Um, and you know, and Abu showed up. Abu had a fantastic game. So um, it just wasn't one of the games that Jalen Jackson fit into very well, but. Um, I just, you know, we we need Carson Hansen to be great, and he was great in that first drive, until we, you know, pulled him out and stalled out. So, but the truth we, about need, we need also need him, we also need him healthy. The truth about the Jalen Jackson thing is he's really not bringing anything to the table at this point. 
Well, I mean, oh, it's I, been a lot. I it's think been a couple of good games. We said, we, but people have said that about Abu. Well, Abu comes out and has a great game. Well, I a, think there's a true sophomore. I think it? it's it's almost like a matchup thing. I mean, I think it's going to be a team that that maybe we need that type of back in. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, every re- time, I'm not ready to just write off Jalen Jackson. But I mean, it's half or over halfway through the season. He's going to be here for one year, and mm-hmm. we have probably a true freshman back there that can bring something to the table. If he's not going forward, at the very least, because he's a small dude. Right. And he's not really – if he's if we're not blocking and giving him holes to work with, I think he's kind of the guy where you can so grab you a s- hold of him and throw him backwards. So it's not Jalen. It's the it's, offensive line. Right. I mean, it, it's the right. – if the we're not – we can't have, like, the punch of, like, having Carson Hanson. He's not there. He's not healthy to be there consistently. Yeah. It, Jackson can't really be doing his role he was doing earlier in the season because we don't really have a solid rotation right now. It's kind of just – not it's just not. I don't even get the rotation right now. Well, the the what I mean the weather that kind of a game was not a Jalen Jackson game because no, he needs a because it, because it's the offensive line has a, when footing is an issue you really really have a hard time getting a push, and when when our guys can't move guys then it's not Jalen Jackson's game. So and I think that's why he needs his feet. He needs to be able to cut. Fast, yeah, it wouldn't, fast, be, it wouldn't surprise me a bit if we, if it, you know, if the if the rain stays away this weekend, then all of a sudden Jalen Jackson has a couple of really or, nice runs. If it's, I'm not sure if Kansas City's turf or not, but anyways, like, but that's why I think Abu is so good in games where it's bad weather because he just takes one cut, boom, and he goes for and he goes forward and he's a straight line. Right, but yeah. when our offense line is really struggling, I think that's when Abu kind of just doesn't know where to go, and that's where he kind of just goes backwards and sideways. Yeah. And uh, I think as soon as when he gets the confidence, of like, no, I'm deciding where I'm taking the ball yeah. rather than waiting to see where they go. That's when, like, literally Huffer had to push him into that hole where he had that long run in Houston. And uh, I, the talent's there, the speed's there, and Abu's going in the right direction. And and we can't have Huffer getting two no. ineligible men downfield penalties. And, and I was talking to a friend of mine on the phone today and said, you know, you know, I played offensive line in high school, so I kind of understand a little bit what they're doing. But, you know, these RPO, these run-pass option things, have got to be tough to not get an a illegal man downfield because, you know, you're thinking it could be a run, and all of a sudden we're throwing and look down and you're five yards down the field. I mean – That's probably like the third or I don't. Know, I don't know how the NFL guys do it. I think the rule is one yard downfield in they the NFL. Just ne- they probably just never call it. It's well, probably- no, I just don't think they ever go down. They just have to stay there. I mean, right. there's, not many, there's not many RPOs in – the NFL, anyway, but um, I think Rocco takes a lot more time to make decide versus like what Rocco and like even Deckers would do. I think Rock, Rocco sees the ball play through more because I think he trusts his offensive line way more than past Iowa State quarterbacks because it's like either when you say hike, he's like, All right, I'm running for my life, or I trust the play in front of me. And I think Rocco does a good job of analyzing whether or not I need a scramble here or. And I think where he gets in the, caught in the middle is like when he makes one decision, then he decides to throw it, and that's the pick. And uh, that's what he's just going to have to learn at, how not to do. And he does the good job of throwing the ball away, and he has the arm strength to do it when he's even being tackled or uh, grabbed, which is impressive because there's so many times where our quarterback didn't even have the arm strength to do that. Right. They just throw a pick or throw a, a grounding penalty. or Speaking of Hunter Deggers, I think he's leading Juco and. Passing right now, yeah. Which because <clears throat> he's that he wants to get a shot, he wants a shot somewhere by somebody in a camp in the NFL. So he's going to have to perform well. But you're right. I mean, Rock, Rocco's having a great year. I mean, he just we're just having our moments where we're not playing well, and you know it is the first week in week in November. So we just need to figure it out because like like we said, everything's out in front of us. I mean, we can. Went out, get to Dallas, then see what happens. It'd be sure fun to knock off Dion in the right. in Dallas. And, and this is Rocco's second o- well, offense coordinator, second time yeah, being right. the first year of offense coordinator. Yeah. So it's obviously there, uh, like Arnott. I think had three or four offense coordinators. Like, yeah, it'd be nice if Mauser can stick around for the rest of Rocco's career, so he doesn't have to. Well, he's been here for a long time already. I know, so. but like just like, as the head guy with his system, I think it's way easier to. Do that when it's in place because Tom Manning was here for other than one year, I think, for Purdy's year, his sophomore year, when Campbell was calling plays. When that's when we had no idea, it was never announced who was calling plays. But I think Campbell took the took the role that year when Brock Purdy's a sophomore. Well, I mean, we you know we gave up what three hundred. 
60 yards total offense to Texas Tech. Taj Brooks went for 127 or 122, and Morton threw for 237. So, how many of those plays were that long touchdown and those long fourth down, third down conversions? Yeah, his Taj Brooks' longest run was 17 yards. So, I mean, it's he's a real deal. I mean, he's a, he's a really yeah, he won the game, and he didn't. They're one of their losses against Washington State. He wasn't there. So, I mean, Texas. I mean, Texas Tech could possibly win out and end up in the playoffs. I mean right. they're I mean they're still those teams that have two losses are still in the hunt too. So um I don't know. I think I I it's funny I was listening to that Big Twelve podcast today and they kept talking about Colorado and Kansas State being in the playoff and just kind of mentioned us in passing. Well it's a guy that's based in Kansas City. So it's obviously probably a Kansas or Kansas right. State fan that but is running the podcast. Just and like media it's just, wise, it's just yeah, everybody's just kind of overlooking us, thinking that we're we don't have any business being there. So I but mean, media wise, like Kansas State has a more of a history of being like at the top versus us in the history, right? Like they obviously they put all the bat, eggs in the Houston or uh, Utah basket before the season started, and, and that didn't work out well. Not really, which I think that really kind of hurt the perception of the league. When they kind of caved fast, yeah. Because, uh, no, you're right because they were tough preseason top ten, and, and they had were all in the prediction uh, throughout the analysts and ESPN that they're going to be the fourth seed and they're going to walk through the Big Twelve and they're going to be the hardest place to play. And yeah, which we hear that all the time when we get new teams. But yeah, I mean our schedule is not easy. I mean even though we have Utah on the schedule who has been struggling, but they still have players. And Cincinnati, I think, is playing pretty well right now. So. Um, yeah, these last four games, if we can pull it off, then we'll be in good shape, obviously, But because they're all quality teams. And then, then hopefully that Kansas State game is a is the big game that everybody's hoping it would be. Do you, but just as, like, the general feel of, like, the fan base, like your age and a little below, I feel like on Twitter and social media, they're just kind of waiting for things to fall. Oh, so, sure, because we've been – we, this isn't our first dance. I know, because, I mean, like, in Seneca's year, we were the top of – like, in the top 15, top 10 – and then we lost out. We lost, lost the rest of the year. We but lost we also had zero depth, and we were we got beat up, and you know. But the, I think that perception of Iowa State is still there a little bit. Oh, sure it is nationally. You because bet. People didn't forget. You that. bet. Well, when you have when you haven't had a nine win season since two thousand two thousand twenty, but other than that. I mean, tw- tw- we've had two. Okay, so we've had two nine win seasons in somebody that's forty years old's lifetime. Right. I mean. One that's, one first round draft pick. Yeah, I mean that's just that's just the way it is. I mean, that's why I think this year we have to play with a chip on our shoulder. We have to use that as fuel to have the chip on our shoulder to show that we belong. And I think the year of Brock Purdy's senior year really hurt that hurt that perception too, because we put that before that year we were it's all we were the top ten and we we're gonna maybe win the Big Twelve and be in the playoff and we we're gonna run all the way back and it really fell on our face that season, but. And that's and that's why people think of what they do about us. Yeah, I mean, that's just what it as is. soon as we, we, that's why we just gonna get to the Big Twelve Championship game and perform in the big game. Yes, that's right. When we did, when the last Big Twelve Championship game it was the first half, and it was just like, oh my gosh, we just we were gonna get blown out, and we were kicking the ball out of bounds at the, the kickoff. And <laughs> was that when Ashim got kicked out? Sheem got kicked out like the second first, play. Second play, yeah. A game suspension for one hit. Insane. Yeah. And like they're in the NFL. Remember uh, they kept sh- he was so upset and they kept showing him and on, on the sideline. He said, get the camera off this kid. It was ridiculous. He's a guy that probably didn't work out too well with the NIL. I mean, he kind of chased the money and Yeah, right. But and him and Craig McDonald. I mean, we t- Tron and I talked about it last week. But anyway, so you well, know. I mean, I hope I hope it doesn't hurt our, our uh fan base is traveling south. I did hear a really cool thing today <laughs> on the on the Kansas um, broadcast. They have a. There's a company that will go set up your tailgate, food, wow. and everything, and so you just show up at your parking spot and it's ready to go. Isn't that a cool idea? That is a good idea. I'm but sure, it's eight thousand dollars. I'm but. sure it's not cheap, but man, that would be if you have if you got the cash to do it. That would be awesome. You have to clean up. You just walk away. I mean, that would be awesome. Yeah, that would be a great great business. Can't remember the name of it, but he's they're going they're setting up tailgates at the at Arrowhead for our game. So. We want to talk a little hoops, or are we done with football? Yeah, we can, uh, or we can just talk about what do you think is going to happen this uh, this weekend? What are your expectations with the, with the Jayhawks? Just say Jayhawks. I, was, I haven't really, other than that one, couple of games, I haven't really watched them play. I think 
they really fell off the face of the sun when because they were <laughs> face of the sun. That's the big, a good way to put it. Because they were listed ahead of us in the preseason poll, they right. lost a lot of games and they're kind of right off and they're not even playing in their own stadium. And yeah, it's yeah. kind of just a bad deal. Like imagine if we were ripping apart Jack Trice and then we just went and played in Drake Stadium and lost like our first four games and God like, help it. Well, like help, in, nobody wanted with to do Kansas's that. fan base. I think they're either like we're all in on football or like we're waiting for basketball season. Yeah. We're not going to come. Oh, to you did, no! There, it's you. I, I when you go on to Spotify, try to find a Kansas football podcast that's going on right now. Yeah, they've checked. They've checked out. The fans have, in my opinion. But you know, they're a lot. They I mean they started off by beating Linwood, which I didn't even know had a football team. But they're and then they lose to Illinois, UNLV, West Virginia, TCU, and Arizona State. Um, those three teams at the time were not exactly the juggernauts of the Big Twelve either. Then they hammer Houston and then barely lose to their rival K-State two weeks ago because they had a bye week last week. So um, we, I don't know what version we're going to get. I mean, I think they got a really good coach. They've got they've got players. But, um, yeah, I, don't, I, have no, I haven't even looked to see what the spread is. But We just can't beat ourselves. No, we, we, can't, we, can't, we can't go back to, the pen, like you said, the penalty thing and all of that and, and think that we're going to have a chance to win because we, we can't. Like you said, we can't beat ourselves. We can't have false starts. We can't have, um, you know, holding on the D-backs. We can't have hands to the face thing that we dealt with. If we get to the one-yard line, score a touchdown. Right. We can't settle for three. Well, the reason, I mean. Like, because those games are, those those plays are kind of deflating. Of course they are. Or as a defense, because when we're, versus when we score a touchdown going out in our defense, I think we're a little more fired up when there's more margin of error and, Especially with our young linebackers, and but the spread's three, really. And we, I just, it just kind of makes me confident as our secondary is veteran. The veteran leadership of our team is the secondary, and I think them being so solid. And they had a tough game against Texas Tech. I think this week they probably were didn't have a great week in practice because well, I'm sure they got their attention. Getting, yeah, because yeah. the film was probably pretty rough for them. And we got Miles Purchase, Darian Porter. Bo Freeler, Jeremy Cooper, who have all been around for a long time, and are really talented players, who can really make a difference on Saturday. Because if we shut them, we shut down the receivers, then it'll be all right in front of us, and we can. Ryan Barnes is playing awesome, yeah. and just uh, continue to get get back on the success and get get ahead. And I don't think we're gonna we can't be down fourteen zero. I think that'd be a worst case scenario. And working from behind, we yeah, need to get right. our confidence back and yeah. lead. Maybe if we score score a touchdown first, if we get the ball in the second half, don't go three and out. Or if we get an interception, don't get three and out. Actually capitalize on their mistakes rather than – because it's kind of – as Iowa State fans, it's kind of like, all right, we got to pick three and out. We're like, All right, it didn't even happen. <laughs> right, yeah. It's a negative. Yeah. Oh, I've got a prediction. So if we kick off – this is going to be a really convoluted prediction. We kick off and – um, they get a three and out, we win on right. the very first possession. You heard it here, folks. But then we also need Indiana to lose to Michigan this week, and we need Utah to upset BYU. Do you think that's it? Should we do it? Do we want do we that? Want, I kind of want BYU to be undefeated. Do we want BYU to win out? Yeah. I want to play BYU in the Big 12 championship game. Who does game. Colorado play this week? Who would you rather play in the Big 12 championship game, BYU or Colorado? Oh, well, I think from a press standpoint, you'd want to play Colorado, wouldn't you? I mean, right. you're going to get all eyes on you because it's way more. Colorado t- plays Tech this week, so they could lose that one too. It's at it's at Lubbock. You're going to get a few tortillas and guacamole thrown at them. But yeah, Colorado has their top players are so good. I think as soon as things go bad, then they could fall off a cliff. But it really hasn't happened this year. Right. I think they have offensive line and defensive line way better than last year, and I think that's given Shadero Sanders and Travis Hunter just. The confidence they need to yeah. go out and I win like, games. I still like them to lose. I mean, I'm just right. a little tired of the whole the celebrating and playing your and own song. Pointing at your fake watch in your wrist and M- you know if, the Kentucky Fried Chicken flipping commercials I'm so sick of. Imagine if Rocco I mean, had a song and he played it after he scored. <laughs> But yeah. Yeah. No, I'm 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 tired of all of that. I mean, just play the stinking game and shut up. But, but like in a weird way, we need them to be good because they're the most. Oh right, because they're the most. Me- this that gives us eyes. Or the know? media. But yeah. They're kind of like if they're at, at their peak, they're trying to they're trying to make like a new Oklahoma in the Big Twelve. And if, yeah. if Dion can get success and get to the Big Twelve championship just at all, they'll just 
I sure. I mean, I think I've asked you this before, but you know, when when Shadur's done, does Dion leave? I don't know. That's a great question. But we'll see about that. Anyways, we're gonna shift to basketball and the fifth ranked Iowa State Cyclones in men's basketball. Uh, the biggest uh, surprise to me going into the game was Milan not starting. Yeah, I knew you were gonna say that. It was Milan not starting. Which uh, it really doesn't. It, it matters more to fans. I feel like, and maybe if Milan doesn't really care about it, then it doesn't matter because yeah. if Milan can have the same attitude that Chris Jones had last year, or that'll be dangerous. Or Tyrus McGee. Tyrus McGee never was, started, and because Tyrus McGee almost won the Ohio State game yeah. by himself. Yeah, I mean, and there's a pretty good comparison between Tyrus and. I mean, they're two different players entirely, but what they bring to the table. I mean, Milan is touted as this fantastic shooter, and I think you know he didn't shoot very didn't shoot very well Monday, but I, I think he wasn't he wasn't used to being that open. I mean, we have these bigs now that are going to have to draw attention, and a guard can't stay out on Milan now. They have to go down and help a little bit with our massive human beings we have inside. Yep. So it's going to I think he's going to have to get used to maybe being a little more open than he has been in the past. So we'll see. I mean, it's just the first game. Like Yeah, I mean, there's, and he's going and TJ said he's going to change the lineup many times, but you know, God, Demar Watson looks like number 10 right now. Right, which is crazy. Which is crazy. You yeah. start on basically any past yeah. Ohio State team, not with uh, all those NBA players, but Watson, yeah, that kind of surprised me the most cuz like I thought cuz like watching the game like he, Watson hasn't got in yet. Yeah. And then, like, that Nate Heisey guy comes in. He's like, he's pretty good. He shot three and made it. And- I really like, like Nate Heisey's body language. Yeah, I mean, I just watched him talking to, you know, Milan and talking to some other guys. And you can tell he's an older guy. He's been the man. He's leading scorer to you and I last year. Um, so he, he knows how to play, and he knows what it takes to, you know, play in a in – a, in a big arena, um, and I think he hasn't ever seen. He's not seen what what's ahead of him in the Big Twelve, obviously. But um, and that was the most god awful team I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, going to the game, the coach for Mississippi Valley State was six and sixty. Yeah, so and they couldn't get any worse. I mean, so it's really hard to take anything from that game. But my mom's like, why don't we just play Grandview? Why don't we just play Drake? Why, why don't we, we play just you and I? Why don't we play? Why, when we play Central, I mean, for crying out loud. One year, one year, when we, when Tinsley was a senior, we opened with Morningside. Morningside we and just about lost. Went to overtime. Yeah. yeah. There was a Hawk fan who put that, put that game on Twitter or on YouTube just for that fact. Yeah. Shocker. But yeah. But these games are, as a fan, it's, the only thing I was really getting excited to is you just go to Hilton and you watch Iowa State play. Yeah. It's like, that's it. Yeah. And, the uh, smell, you walk in, but like clone cones. We might they, they bring the, did they bring the hot nuts back yet? The hot nuts. <laughs> the nuts that you could buy, the right. pecans and everything? Yeah, I don't know. That's those, more, those are one of my favorite. I, I think they've kind of gone away. I think that's but, the first thing you smell when you get into Hilton is uh, the hot nuts. Yeah, the hot nuts. And, <laughs> all right. Speaking of hot, that Gematron is Speaking pretty, of nuts. Uh, that new Gematron. Yeah. But isn't it a wraparound? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty it's cool. It's next level. And yeah. last year, we're, the world. We are in the sitting upper deck, and uh, our screen that we could see, was, there was just so much wrong with it. And there's one game, there was only one speaker working, and oh it was boy. the complete opposite of where we're sitting. So Sounds they, got, like they got all they got all new speakers. They got all new uh, Jumbotron, and it looks awesome. And Hilton can't be better. Just it was top, a pretty, was a pretty good crowd. I mean, you can't see the upper deck on TV because I couldn't go. Um, but was there a pretty good crowd there? Yeah. Pretty decent crowd for the for the, the team and the nursing home from the south. Yeah, if maybe if we could start the game out with like you and I or Drake or yeah, some get some. Michigan. Yeah, I agree. That's a great. I mean, like you, it should be the first game of the year should be an event. Like it should be twenty four hour college basketball is back. University South, some somebody that's close too. Like we play Omaha. We, no, we play Creighton in the scrimmage. Just make that the first game. Yeah, I mean, then you then you're running the risk of starting off zero and one. Nobody wants to do that. I mean, but but that make the regular season matter it, versus know. playing teams that we know are just going to tally seven wins versus well, like seven but, wins but with bring 50. a team in that's regional at least. I mean, Mankato State or um, uh, University of South Dakota or some place where the parents and the couple fans from that school could actually drive there. All of these schools that we have in Illinois that we I mean we have the the ruse coming Monday from Kansas City, but um, Eastern Illinois, Western Illinois. I mean, you know, this when you have a team that comes from a long ways away, you're not getting any 
excitement because there's no there's no connection whatsoever. I mean, so I don't know. Maybe uh, I'm it might bitching change. about something I shouldn't be. But. It might change down the line because if they really make it for the non conference, because they, last year we didn't get the one seed because their non conference was so bad. Apparently, yeah. and now we're gonna play Maui. So yeah, we could play Auburn, North Carolina. All Is those you gone there? Uh, I think so. Yeah, and but those games, how much more impactful for the sport would be better if they were played in campuses where college students can go watch their team rather than watch it on TV in Thanksgiving week. We're talking about the Maui tournament. That's kind Just of stuff? those big yeah. games. Oh, like yeah, they yeah. can't be on held on campuses. Like now they're in. But nobody. Um, I mean, Maui's a big deal for the players. They get to go to Maui for right, Maui. right. But now, if Maui doesn't have like the huge NI, they're because like now they're making like NIL deals and tournaments, and like Vegas right. is making a. When is that? By the I way, think that's next year. Because Houston's in that, I think. I don't know if we're in next year or not, but I don't know. It's just. Hmm. You know, we're doing, if you don't know what we're talking about, you, Vegas is putting together a tournament that is an NIL. They don't call it that, but it's going to be an NIL tournament where the winner of the tournament, the players get paid. Yeah, which, that's which is a game changer. Yeah, which is, I don't know. I'm too old to to like it. It's just so much. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Much, so much new going on. Yeah, I mean, but yeah. I didn't really get to. I didn't get to watch the Audi Crooks game and uh, first their first game. I'm sure they did. That's a cool event because they bring in all of these elementary kids, and it sounds. And I talked to. I actually talked to Audi Crooks's aunt this week about the game, and I said, "Yeah, I've, I've seen it." And it, you know, it's like if you've ever been in a middle school lunchroom, it's like a middle school lunchroom on steroids because there's all these little kids there screaming, and they're allowed to scream and make noise, and, right? And they're going bananas, and they're all sugared up and everything. It's so it's a cool event being, but. Um, yeah, we can't start out twenty nine to nothing or whatever it was. I mean, so. well, in my my mind like shouldn't if they're going to do that, just maybe like instead of playing in Hilton, go around the local gym and like, fill like the place dress, like, like Dresser does. Yeah, what, yeah, that's a good idea. Imagine if they went to Garrigan and had a game there. Or, oh boy, that would be crazy. That They'd would be, be crazy. But but the problem is the the court is not as long. That's true. And the Webster three City. point line is different. You could do it at Webster City. You could. That's a really good point. Webster City's got a college length game or a, a floor. Yeah, that's a really good idea. I Maybe mean, get Jamie on the phone. See, right. if, it, see if he'll like, sign up for that. There's one year where uh, Iowa State volleyball can play because of the when there was a flood in Hilton that one summer. They had to play names and like every game was just insane. At Ames High, his Ames High, every yeah. game was just insane. Yeah, the issue with that though is, I mean, the the court's the same size, so I mean, that's right. it, that's a. I don't know. I mean, I I I think you know we're heading into high school playoffs. And I wish they'd play the high school state championship outside. I mean, because I know that because you know we're Iowa State is going to be playing home games after the, all of the high school state championships are done. The very first state championship is played in Kinnick. Yeah, it'd be fun. You know, I know the weather will be. There's some years the weather will be horrible, um, but I wish it was outside rather than the Uni Dome. But that's just my they, opinion. They probably just. Obviously, there's so many years, like, thank God it's in the U-Dome. Yeah, year. no, but kids don't, you know, it's changed. I mean, there's more turf fields nowadays. But kids have been playing outside all fall. Like, this weekend, it's going to be in the 40s. It's going to be a beautiful night for high school football. But both of those the games, I think they're thinking more of, like, the general public who is not from the school coming to watch the game rather than the schools. But you're talking about filling things. Can you imagine if you have a semifinal high school game in Humboldt? Right. You imagine what that would be like. Yeah. That would be insanity if you got the or or did a neutral field and played it at uh, pick a stadium, Fort Dodge or or uh, some Iowa Central's wherever they play. I mean, that's a bad example, but or Waldorf Stadium or someplace like that. I mean, that would be insane. I mean, but right. that's football. I mean, that's more like Iowa high school football. And the Nebraska State Championships played in Memorial Stadium, so it's not like it's they can't pull it off. Yeah, and then most of the most of these big time fields now have turf too. So, what if they just started the year, stirred the football season earlier? Yeah, I'm not a fan or, of that. I mean, it's too hot. Yeah, I mean we're gonna have a heat issue, and yeah, there's they're already kind of the first couple practices are already kind of they should practicing in like 95 yeah. degree weather. And I don't know. I mean, I I, th- I think it'd be fun to have it outside. I mean, but, and because we live in Iowa, and if it's gonna be cold, that's just the way it is. I mean, it's just part of it and if it but then it maybe have it like so you know like we've said on this before there's supposedly the playoff committees have been going around to these teams that are going to play home games asking what their backup plan is if the weather is just impossible to play in 
Like they have a backup indoor stadium well, well, or someplace. It's possible though. Like they do. I don't know. Like I Green mean, Bay, Packers. So like games, the like Ohio the State possibly like is going to go to. Uh, what's the closest indoor stadium? The Bengals don't play inside, do they? Yeah, I'm not sure. The Browns have an indoor stadium. I mean, I know. But, Mich- that, anyway, that, I I don't know where where Iowa State's backup plan would be, but but my mind, they, off track here. in my mind they don't. <laughs> In the playoff game, like it's to say, we make the playoff. We're hosting a playoff game. It's negative fifteen degrees outside. Well, they do that in the Viking Stadium. They they did that for Green Bay. They do that in Lambeau Field. Oh, sure, right. It's a Lam- they, oh, Lam- you're gonna line Lam- Lambeau and all of these other outdoor Browns, the, and- the Jets. I mean, the Giants all play outside, and so. like they can't say, oh, these are amateur athletes anymore. They get paid, right? Go out yeah. there and suck and that's it up. A, that's an advantage to us. Yeah, like Iowa State, like. You're telling me the Farmageddon game last year, if we were playing Bama, like <laughs> yeah, that's right. it really yeah. makes the loving field, the playing field, really more level. Like, yeah. I think Abu could have had a decent get day against Bama on that day. Yeah, it's true. Which, yeah. Well, we're getting off track here. So, back I mean, I, yeah, back to basketball. I mean, we're, I mean, we're loaded, and we're as, we're as as loaded as I've ever seen us. I mean, even going back to Fred's years with Monte and those guys. I mean. Our level of depth right now is off the charts. I mean, Noyjus or however you pronounce his first name really looked like he belonged. I loved his body language. He did not look scared at all. Um, he t- he looks like a player where like, wow, he came to Iowa State. Yeah, like, well, he's our big, best he, recruit. I know numbers wise, but like I just mean, walking into Hilton and seeing us warm up, we just look a lot bigger, uh, a lot stronger. Lot, like Deshaun is a massive human being. Like, Chatfield is a massive human being. Milan's huge. John Jefferson and Deshaun's footwork in the post is phenomenal. I mean, right. I was just watching him do a couple moves. And like Deshaun missed his first three or four free throws, but I'm just like his form. <laughs> and then he about tore the rim off. He took one step and dunked it, and from the from the three point line. And, and Joshua Jefferson looks apart. He looks really good. I mean, and and I tell you what. Show me a better guard combo than Keyshawn and Curtis Jones. I mean, they they play so well together. And then you add Taman to that. We I mean Taman's coming off an injury. I mean, when he got knocked down, I thought right. I thought it was going to be on because I thought they're all of the guys kind of bristled up a little bit when he got kind of fouled pretty hard. But I don't know. I mean, you know, it's worse. I mean, if we, God forbid we have an injury, obviously it's going to change. We've talked about this before that it changes the the whole dynamic of basketball is so much faster because you don't have 42 players playing. You've got maybe seven. So um, it'll be interesting to see how it shakes out. I mean, I think we'll know a lot during Maui when we are shorting up our rotation and we'll probably have the real starting lineups. You know, I don't know if it's yeah, a like, real one or not. My I mean, mind's like, all right, we if we let's just say best case scenario, we're just – we're obviously we played a coach who has six, his record six and sixty, and we beat him by forty or whatever. But if we're just going on the trajectory of what I think we could be, and we win Maui, and we're coming back and playing Iowa, we could be ranked number one in the nation. <laughs> playing a, in and Iowa I'm City, going, I'm going to that game gonna, too, and we'll probably lose. I, third. I went there last time when we played at. If you remember that, yep. That's when Gabe which, Kalsher took a three from the from the sideline and hit the side of the backboard. The game start. I didn't know you were going to the game until the game started. I'm like, did you know Dad's there? I'm like, why did he go? <laughs> why? It never works out. Like the same way I went the one year with Tyrese Halliburton was a freshman, and we gave up 105 points. And gosh, we were bad. That we just yeah. That was that was not a that was fun. It was a fun time. I mean, I fun, enjoyed Gus and I went and. And had a good time. And this year, Wooters is going with us, I think. So, so you, well, you, at the time, talk they, about politics a little bit. They had all the McCaffreys, and yeah, oh gosh, just thank God. Yeah, the only I, I said that on this podcast back then. I said the only bonus was they could actually buy a beer in the stadium at at, <laughs> at uh, Carver. So it was first back then. It was the first time I'd been back in Carver since I worked at Tom Davis's camp when I was coaching. Wow! And so we had a league. And I refereed the the league championship on Carver's floor during wow. camp, and that was a long time ago. But uh, just like think about how Iowa basketball is perceived since then. Oh. Like back then they were the top dog in the state. Oh yeah. And now it's well, I mean, no, that was Johnny year. So I mean, we were that was that was but the two year, three years removed from the LaFester game. So but the perception of just the state and sports in general. It was yeah. like Johnny Orr came and saved Iowa State basketball, but Doctor Tom was at. Uh, was at uh, 
Iowa, and he was a really good dude. I mean, I met some really good guys there, and but it was uh, it was a long time ago. I mean, but it's exactly still the same. It's kind of a strange place to play basketball game when you walk in at ground level and walk down. It's kind of right. like it's kind of like a miniature version of the pit in Albuquerque. So they should just call it Kalen Clark Arena. No, oh, yeah, they sh- that should be done tomorrow, right? Because you know? otherwise, it's just gonna. They should re- take away at Kalen Clark. It was just a ba- wrestling arena where they play basketball. Have you ever looked at the ratings of the WNBA after Kalen got beat out of the playoffs? Just tanked. I, no, I haven't looked oh, either. I'd be, sure. I really have been been. I brought that up to your mom, and I said I'd I'd really be interested to see what the ratings, what happened to the ratings once she stopped playing. Because I think there's ABC better. did everything they could to keep him on the front page in the news in the morning, but Kalen was still the show. I mean, I, so. but I think they kind of overtaken baseball, marketing wise. Does Possibly. ESPN talk about women's basketball sports more than baseball? Well, ESPN and ABC are owned by the same company. They're owned by both Disney companies. Yeah. So, I mean, right. and so they're both on the same page trying to push whatever the Disney agenda is at the time. So we're getting way off track here. So but It's just nice because that is the case, but we have a top 10 women's basketball team who can yeah. get even more attention. Like Audie Crooks be, could be the face of women's basketball. She's on a lot of the, I was telling her aunt though, she's on the, a lot of the big 12 commercials. Yeah. But yeah. we have a really big opportunity there because Audie Crooks, she already had a great year last year. LeBron James was talking about her. Yeah. And if she can come in and have a great keep year. Her keep her just healthy. Keep her healthy. And, 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 El- and I tell Emily Ryan, their Looks like a year. different person, different person from last year because you know she was pretty open. At, talk about a brave young lady. Yeah, right. To get out and put all of that out there in the open. I mean, there's not many people that have a strong enough personality to do that. And thank, I mean, I'm so she doesn't know me. This doesn't mean anything to her, I'm sure. But I was just proud of her, just watching her do that because that takes a lot of guts to get out and put all of that stuff out in the open. Yep. And. Um, I think she gained a lot of fans that day because that yep. was a brave thing to do. It's just like the comparison of what she's doing it versus when Royce White did it back in like yeah. 10 years ago. Just a complete shift. And, and it's, right. just so, it's so much easier to come out and talk about a lot of stuff. And, and Royce lost his – Royce lost his uh, – Job over his, uh, his No, he lost his Senate seat. No, the NBA. Yeah, right. He lost his job at the NBA over it. Right. right, exactly. But he also lost his election this week to – Amy Klobuchar. They still almost got a million votes. He got he he lost by five percent. Crazy, yeah, it's insane. Which, yeah, he had a picture on it with him as mo- his mom, um, voting together, and you know, and then he's been, he's been pretty yeah, nasty watch, to some people on social people, media. This I mean, week. yeah, that maybe it's Royce, it's a given almost. Right. Just the people are laughing at him how he was even running, and he almost he damn near won. Yeah, in a really democratic state, but yeah, it was just weird from seeing when he came to our living room. Or through our house to like his interest wasn't even basketball. And then fast no, forward to right. now. It's just like, oh, yeah, he said he said he told me sitting at our counter eating lunch that, you know, maybe I'll make money playing basketball someday, but he had you know, he was just a tool. It wasn't his passion, really. I mean he was just a god gift had so many gifts. I mean, right. you, you probably you probably heard this before, but he's Dave Winfield's Nephew, who Dave Winfield is one of the is the only guy I think that has been drafted by Major League Baseball, the NBA, and the NFL. Same guy, right? And was a phenomenal. So if you want to see some good fights in the Major League Baseball, look up Dave Winfield on YouTube. I mean, he was a massive human being, and I'm sure there's some pictures that were having a lot of stories too. incontinence when you see him running at the mound. I mean, yeah, it's uh... anyway. So we're all over the map here, but it's right, it was the uh, it's kind of Again, it was a brave thing to do for Emily, and I'm, I was, I think she just shows the kind of person that Bill Family recruits. I mean, and it's just great that she has a COVID year to use. And, yeah, that's right. And I didn't, I, I'm not a thousand percent sure. I just saw this on Twitter, but I think Deshaun Jackson has a COVID year he could use. Josh, Je- Josh, Joshua does. Uh, Jefferson does. Jefferson, not Jackson. Which I, I don't know. I just saw that. And also, yes, every time, right. a lot of the times, maybe you haven't been a game yet, but. Every time Deshaun Jackson does anything, the announcer says, Deshaun Big Dog Jackson. But you're already trying to give him a nickname? Yeah, they, and then the, the our student section barks. Oh, really? It's kind of sick. That's funny. Which that well, he be. must be embracing it then, huh? I mean, Yeah, which that would be kind of sweet. If we get the whole – if we get Hilton barking and <laughs> if he dunks on uh, Dickerson against Kansas or something. Yeah, and they have to put the Bill Murray uh, 
bark like a dog thing from Caddyshack up on the big screen. Or it's like, I think they need to play, like, obviously college basketball <laughs> doesn't play, like, music, but if they, imagine if they had, like, Who Lost the Dogs out. You know, like, a, <laughs> right. they have music during the NBA games. So That's a that. throwback to when Ellis Hobbs was playing? Is that is – that? I was – First grader. Yeah, I think that's what I don't know. I was gonna look up something. What were we talking about before? Doesn't matter. Yeah. Um hey, and uh, I get I came back oh, and Jefferson. posted the ESPN plus game. Obviously I was uh at the game, but man, could we just step up the announcer game just a little bit? Like we're a top five team. Yeah, I'm pretty big can't... finish this thought. I think I'm ninety percent sure Joshua Jefferson has a COVID year. So he could be back. Like can they just zoom in Brett Musburger from his back like living room or something AI, AI uh pet some roll it just we used to have Ar- or uh armstrong what's his name dave armstrong, dave armstrong. We had dave armstrong and oh Gary- we're talking about basketball now yeah i'm sorry larry morgan well i'm sorry you're not going to catch me saying anything negative about larry morgan because larry who morgan used to be on kggo it was moffin morgan in the morning he used to have a morning show on kgo his radio in guy Des Moines. yes and so he's he's an old, older gentleman it's yeah, probably the only that. only games that he broadcasts all year I don't know who the other guy is, but uh, he's doing the best he can. But I'm I mean, telling you, we had they, Dave, they haven't called us yet. Dave so. Armstrong and Gary Thompson calling. It was ESPN Plus back in the day, right? Even they, at, we used to, then, well, we, John Walters used to John do. John Walters, yeah, used Gary to have Thompson. the old Milwaukee, old Milwaukee light like quick stats. But I'm saying, is there not just the young youth wanting to be broadcasters? Is there not like a pool of Chris young Hassel? talent? Like I would take Chris Hassel. Yeah, I would I'd too. Take, yeah, take Chris Hassel and his dad. We need game. Alex Benzagala. That's the guy we need to pull in. I think he's in Tulsa, Oklahoma now. He used to be our local oh, we need a, sports guy. We need to get the the guy who yells on our football games, who just goes absolutely nuts, even like a boo, Sama. <laughs> uh, the, that guy. We just need to hire him full time. Now, we'll let Larry let Larry Morgan right in the sunset. He's doing fine. It's just the ESPN Plus games. And we couldn't have him. Many of them. We didn't have him during the premiere. Premier. Who'd we have? Not him. We had Brent Bloom and well, whoever. Brent Bloom's too busy. I know raising that. money. Yeah, <laughs> imagine if he, they put that on his plate also. Yeah, but anyways, that's the really the only. So maybe he could get Ames Lager to sponsor. That is my only complaint about the basketball season. Yeah, but well, the, the, if, just if, having on an ESPN, being ranked fifth and being on ESPN Plus, period, is not good. Right, but it should be on. If you're like me, something else, and you're gonna, you're gonna complain about it, just. To be like me and just go to the games. Yeah. So you don't have right. to watch it. Yeah. I, I mean, I was going Monday, but I've been, I've been, my years of riding in the car is starting to take its toll on me. So I give, I'm having a hard time staying in the car that long. And I was really wondering whether I was going to make it into Hilton. I feel old as hell that week, but I'm back. So I should be able to go Monday. So yeah. It's just, uh, and then I wish there was another game following up that Monday game. There should be another game yeah. this week because that's kind of a long week to wait. And then it's just going to be another. Cupcake game. So we go Monday. Don't, what do we go? Monday, 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 right? Right. I think it's, yeah, it's Mississippi Sunday. Valley State, Kansas City, then uh, Uwe Pooey, which is Indianapolis, um, Purdue. Or uh, Indian. No, this is Indianapolis. IU Indianapolis. Sorry. It's not uh, whatever the Uwe Pooey stands for. I can't remember. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, Indian uh, Indiana University in Indianapolis. So we play the following Monday, and then it's we go the following Monday to play Auburn. So it's all four Mondays. So, And then we have those three games in a row, and then we come back and play. But as a coach, what? you're a former coach. Do these games give us anything? It gives positive? us something to play. We, we're going to see some looks of things. We saw a zone. We saw a zone on Monday. We probably hadn't worked a lot against, so that was a like, plus. If we just – if we're in charge, let's say I'm in charge, and I just say we don't need these games anymore. We're gonna start the game. We're gonna start the season on Christmas. We're getting rid of all these hell. games. No. The, then if we start, why does the NBA season, have? Why does the NBA have a preseason? Why does the NFL have a preseason? Well, I, I'm arguing that the NBA should do the same thing because no one cares about the NBA right now. Who no. is paying attention than to, to October many. to November games? No one. No, no. one. Even pays these these right. games serve a purpose. They're they're. They have a. It's fun for the kids. First of all, they don't have to scrimmage each other for the next month, and we get to work out some kinks of things that we need to work out on. And then you know, when you get thrown into the fire of the Big Twelve, I mean, we go from we go from playing all of those the juggernaut of Maui to playing um, Marquette Marquette at home, and then we have Jackson State. Then we go to the Hawkeyes, and then we have Omaha, 
Morgan State, and then we start the Big 12 on December 30th at Colorado, which is going to be fun. It's been a long time since we played at Colorado. And then I wonder how many of these – I'm not sure how scheduling is done versus the past, but there's another – like football where you were scheduling 10 years in advance. So, like, these schools, no, we have so. no idea how good they're going to be Yeah, five no. years from now versus, you know. I mean, I don't think we schedule – we don't schedule basketball out very far, do okay. we? I'm, I mean, not sure. we I'm not sure how it works. Because I used to be able to look ahead, like in football. I, I think you can go on the football schedule and see who we play non-conference five years out right now. Yeah, I think we're – We can't do that with basketball. Yeah, I'm not sure how it works. I think it should be more year by year. I may, may even, like, put in, like, if whoever, whoever you lose in, like, the postseason NCAA tournament game, you automatically play that. That would be fun. I, I would be go- – I would be – That'd be awesome. Just Down like with that, like, as the kids say. Just things like that. Just freshen up the post, like off or uh, before the conference season. Because right now, there's really no juice at all. Yeah. Because o- football owns, especially with the playoff expanding within the December, it's gonna really make hard for college basketball to. Other than March, they, no one talks about the college basketball. Well, it's a lot of money than the overlap, so. So, Gambling. well, we've got covered everything. We're yep. about an hour into this sucker. Yep. Uh, basketball season looks great. Women are probably going to have a great year, too, which I can't wait to see them play UConn in a couple of weeks, which yeah. that will be exciting if we can win that game and we'll be, put us on the map and make the media talk about us. Not, maybe not as much as they talk about the Hawks the last couple of years, but yeah. they'll give us some shine. And football, we just need a – Got to win Saturday. Squeak by a victory against Kansas. Got to win. If Saturday. not, just win comfortably and yeah. uh, get our offense going again because it's kind of hard when uh, it's your first year and things are going wrong. And obviously, we went started seven and zero, and we didn't even really think about that we had a new OC because we things were rolling. But yeah. it's uh, his first year with a true sophomore quarterback, and got just thank God we need. I think we need to give Jalen Noel the ball twelve times. Yeah. Because every time he gets the ball, something good happens. Especially when he's a Kansas City kid. Right. I and mean, this weekend will be a good weekend to do it. I think he's a Chiefs fan, too, which oh, gives him Sure, a, it's a dream for him. Yeah. And uh, so I think it'll be a good week for the, weekend for the Cyclones. And obviously, we'll probably shellac whoever we play on Monday. I don't even know the team. but It's the Ruse from Kansas City. Kansas City so. Ruse. And, which, are, remember, we we played at the Ruse once. Yeah, that wasn't that long ago. It was, I remember Tyrus McGee. I think it was Corey Lucius' year. I think if I remember Was right. it that long ago? Yeah. We played there, which I, I thought didn't was, think it was that long ago. I think that was insane. I'll have to hmm. get fact checked on that, but anyways. Uh, well, sh- Thomas, is, if you're on YouTube, you can see Thomas wearing the new white Sound the Siren shirt that we just came out with. It just got posted on our website. So, yep. you want to help us out a little bit, help pay the bills? We have we don't have a ton of bills, but there is a subscription for the website, and we do have equipment we're trying to pay for. So, if you want to help Thomas out a little bit and order a shirt, we'll get it out to you. Um, got a new shipment of black shirts that just came in this week too. So um, the reverse of this one that he's wearing right now. So you want to help him out to uh, do that. We really appreciate you guys listening. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, um, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like, follower button on Spotify. Give us a review. Tell your friends. Tell your grandma. All right. Tell your dog. I don't know what I'm saying. I mean, dog. <laughs> tell tell whoever you can. Just tell them that uh, we're we're the uh, alternative. I guess you could say I don't know. I'm so damn tired right now I can barely think. So I think I'm right. I think I'm ready to punch out. Sounds good. Go cyclones. Go cyclones.